Hey everybody, welcome to Mining Modern, and this is something I didn't think would happen. This is Blueberry Merfolk, Simic Merfolk. I'm Corbin Hostler. Uh, thanks for watching. I did not think that we would end up in this position, but here we are. We are playing green and merfolk, and you know why? It's because we had to play one mana, two twos, and we get to play another four silver girl adept in the form of merfolk branchwalker. In the main deck, that's all the green is for. I'm not playing collected company. Um, I think collected company, while obviously a great card, I don't think it's a great fit for Merfolk, and I know a lot of people usually skip over the deck techs, um, but I do encourage you to go back and watch it if you didn't already, uh, because I spent a long time in there, you know, a good five to ten minutes just talking Merfolk theory um, based on a lot of experiences with the deck, including why uh, Collective Company, I think, is not great here. Um, so, that said, what we do have is uh, some pretty powerful green options. The board, the sideboard gets this natural say, which helps the affinity matchup. Um, but we also get to play one mana two twos in the deck, and the deck never got to do that before. So uh, this is obviously a pretty powerful turn here. Our opponent has a mountain, and uh, we have four power and play on turn two. And next turn I get to play Lord of Atlantis and go to town. So, uh, sure. Well, I guess uh, that is that is sort of not quite a one mana two two in this scenario. I guess looks like we're playing against goblins here. All right, does Member Rule come in handy? Pretty soon, I imagine. But let's go ahead and play Lord of Atlantis. Now, all of a sudden, the speaker's a 3-3. Three, three. Now, this deck doesn't have a ton of islands. We're only playing 18 lands. Um, what I did with the deck is I'm not playing Cocos. I'm not playing any four drops. Master of Waves is gone. Uh, what we have is four Kumena speaker, four Merfolk branch walker, 18 lands, normal Merfolk besides that. And it makes the deck a lot more streamlined, a lot more low to the ground. Your Ether Vials are, are, are better. Um, your curve is better, your sideboard's better. There's just a lot uh, that the deck has going for it right now. And I don't know if blue-green is the way to go forever, if the future of Merfolk is blue-green. Um, this turn's going to suck. <laughs> but uh, I do know that it's certainly worth trying, and that's what we're doing here today. Now, as it is, our opponent has decided to attack us for a whole bunch of damage. That's for the Pearl Trident on top, huh? Okay, well, we do have to just dismember this thing, because it was going to deal us three anyways. May as well deal ourselves four instead. real question is, do I block here? Um, do we want to try to race? We know what we have on top of our deck. We can attack for a lot of damage. I'm going to attempt to race here. I don't know if this is the correct decision or not, but we, we shall see. Now, I have to try to guess this mutavault thing correctly but i don't know if there's a way to okay i think the one we want to activate is in the back well, we're gonna find out all right we did it right <laughs> okay i always got to play that guessing game with magic online but yeah i mean i'm attacking for a billion damage this turn so 711 put our opponent to five so we just have to not die here um which i mean we could die but i think we're probably a good bet not to die uh if our opponent tries to block we have the spreading seas to to island walk on in all right he needs like mog war marshal plus a land plus a reckless bushwhacker and if he doesn't have it he's just dead okay all right looks like it puts it on top so that's good to know all right, we shall spreading seize our opponent's only land. Only untapped land, anyways. All right, we got there. Okay, so moving on to the sideboard. None of these cards do anything. <laughs> okay, yep. Uh, I mean, Dispel's probably fine, but yep, yep. Then we're just, this, our deck is what our deck is. <laughs> I don't know what the old version of the deck would look like. The one drop we had there allowed us to race. Imagine if we didn't have the one drop. Or if that one drop was a curse catcher, even, it would not have been as good. Um, okay, so you can see the list here. Um, pretty normal. Regeries, Kira. The Kapala's in here. It's a 1 1 split with Kira. Uh, Kira's better, but Kapala is also good. And if you, obviously, for Merfolk synergies, etc., um, you play the 1 1 split, you can have them both and play at the same time, which is great. You also avoid the legendary drawback. Um, the mana base. Not as many islands. You basically need more Merfolk to turn this on. Um, but, you know, pretty good all around. 18 land maybe pushing it, but we only have four 
things that cost uh, more than two mana. Is this member will always cost one. One copter down here, because copter, if you're not up on Merfolk tech, is actually very, very good. Smooths out your draws in the late game. Flies, which is relevant, etc., etc. Merfolk branch walker, though, I love this card. It's a silver girl adept. You know, and I almost say it's a silver girl adept at worst. But it is a silver girl adept some amount of the time. And the other amount of the time, and most of the time in this deck, it's a 3-2 with scry 1. And that's, you know, I don't it's not, I don't think it's as good as Silver Girl Adept, but there are a lot of times where being a 3-2 with Scry 1 is better than, um, than, than being a 2-1 that draws a card. And look at this hand. This hand is pretty sweet here. Only way it gets better, I think, is if we draw a Vial. We might still get Goblin out of the game, because that's what Goblins does, but drawing an Aether Vial would be nice. All right, no Vial. Yeah, having additional one drops in this deck is so good. The deck doesn't, you know, what the deck doesn't do is play. I don't know if it, I want to say play the long game as well. It doesn't have as many individually powerful cards in it. Yeah, I'm not going to block if he's just swinging for one. Alright, we're on our Silver Girl Adept out here. Revealing more full Branch Walker. That sure feels good. <laughs> Uh, it's actually possible. I think I messed up. I think I was supposed to play the island there. Oh, never mind. But I should have, because if he'd bolted our Silver Girl, we would have only hit him for one. I did that so that, you know, the Mute Vault isn't summoning sick or whatever later, but we're not attacking with the next turn anyway, so that was just dumb of me. Alright, here comes the Reckless Bushwhacker. We will be blocking. <laughs> Still feels fine, though. We took some damage, but we're we're actually look at this. All right, we're actually still racing here, even. Oh my gosh, it feels so good. Um, I'll attack. We know we're drawing cards for days here. And if he does anything real scary, like a lord or whatever, we can just dismember. You know, when I play Merfolk, it always feels like if I draw a hand with two Silver Girl Adepts in it, unless it's like against a combo deck or something, I feel like I can almost never lose the match. And Branch Walker kind of feels the same way. You you have a lot more hands that feel like they have double Silver Gills in them. Is this an unsurged Bushwhacker? That's not very good for our opponent. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and dismember this thing now. Gonna block here. No reason not to block. We we are drawing a bunch of cards. We have the mute vault for later. Um, kind of awkward though. You can see here we are gonna have to deal ourselves damage with the mana base, which is you know when you're just playing blue straight blue, you you never had that happen to you. All right, we'll deal ourselves a point of damage here. Hopefully, it doesn't come back to bite us. Look at that. That means we've now played three Silver God Ups this game. Feels pretty good. Certainly feels pretty good. Yeah, I think we just want to play the blocking game at this point. Uh, we have Kira to protect our guys. We have the Muta Vault. Our opponent only has two cards in hand. We just have to not die. Yeah, he can't even attack. It's pretty good for us. Okay, um, I'd like to go ahead and just play Kira. And I think I'm going to get greedy and go ahead and fetch up the other island here so I can play the Spreading Seas. We are out of basics now. But our opponent would have to have... Yeah, he's only got one card in hand. <laughs> Another Silver Girl. Okay, might, might be paying five for that one. Um, looks like I can get an attack with one of these guys here. Don't want to attack with both. I don't. Maybe I don't want to attack at all. I think I just don't attack at all. I feel like the only way we lose is our opponent playing a creature and then um, playing a, a Reckless Bushwhacker or something. And I don't really want to um, have to throw my cure under the bus if I don't have to. Whew. 
Ooh, that was pretty gross. But you can't really attack, can he? Okay, so I will play Silver Gill. There's a lot of card drawing we did in this game. <laughs> Alright, another Sanctum. Play the Lord. And uh, that's lethal damage right there. This, uh, having one drops felt good. That felt good. This, it's obviously one game and that matchup was probably fine regardless beforehand. I, I, it, no matter what we do here, I can only show you how the deck plays. We can't draw any definitive conclusions. It's going to take a lot of testing, a lot of tournaments, a lot of time to figure out whether blue-green merfolk is better than normal merfolk. Um, whether you should just play Branch Walker, maybe you, whether or not you should play Collected Company and not Vials, etc., etc. There's a lot um, a lot that will be determined over the coming months, and what I'm just begging, hoping for is that Arrivals of Ixalan uh, will give us some better one-drop than Curse Catcher. Kumina Speaker is good, um, and you play it to the... Sometimes you can have eight, but I don't think that it's better than Curse Catcher uh, necessarily. And when I see things like uh, Judge's Familiar or really Mausoleum Wanderer, look at Mausoleum Wanderer and then look at Curse Catcher. Come on, give me something better. It's all I'm asking for. But I am pleasantly surprised by Exelon so far because when I first looked at it, I was like, Kapala's just questionably there with Kira, maybe not even better. And there's nothing else here. How did we get a Merfolk set? And there's no Merfolk that are worth playing. Um, but I was certainly wrong in my initial assessment about Branch Walker because Branch Walker is absurd. Um, and Commander Speaker might be good. So I think with Rivals of Ixalan, Merfolk could, could really be a blue-green deck um, from here on out because Branch Walker is that powerful. If we got something to replace... Things I think the deck could use as a replacement for Curse Catcher. Something that's similar, but... Um, better. I mean, like, look at Mausoleum Wander. That's sort of my go-to. Uh, but I think you can also use a land, like a blue-green land. You look at Sliverhive or Ally Encampment, and you see these things that are just very, very good for those particular tribes. Imagine if we had a card that was just Ally Encampment for Merfolk, where you could add any color, but then it also had an ability later on. That would be really great. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what this deck goes. You, this deck also doesn't have any Cavern of Souls, um, because you have to maximize... Um, sort of your, it's kind of weird. I mean, you can probably fit some in there, but right now it's where we're at. Um, so I don't know. I don't know where things are going to go, but that was, that felt pretty good. That was a lot of silver gills and more Merfolk branch walkers right there. So thanks for watching. Let's, uh, let's play some more.